Well, it's August. I have a hot coffee and now it's 90 degrees again. I'm committing to fall already. You can't stop me. Hello and welcome back to Plies and Hellhounds. This is my crafty puppy interrupted channel coming to you from Central Connecticut. I'm your human host Gabby and you can find me everywhere online as Gabigail and all my hand-eyed yarn at Plies and Hellhounds and pliesandhellhounds.com. Today is a very big recap week of um, I have a lot of finished objects to share with you. I have stuff that I got on the i91 shop hop that I went on last week to share with you. I think I have an acquisition that I don't sh didn't share with you. I don't know. She's been moving around my office so much. I don't I can't tell because usually I like after I share something, I put it in a specific spot, but I've just been moving this around the house with me, so I I can't tell if I did anything. So yeah, let's we're just we're here. We're here for it. We're ready. I'm I have a hot coffee. Uh, the heat broke finally. Audrey's mad. The dogs downstairs are mad. It's let's go. Let's do this. To start off, I am wearing the Argyle top. I don't remember who it's by or what brand of yarn I use. I will try and put it down here somewhere. It is a linen yarn. I can tell you that much. And it's very comfy and I love it. And I would 100% knit this top again. I know it's very handy. I've got a Knits for Pirates pencil skirt on for the bottom because again, it's gonna be 90 degrees here in central Connecticut. And uh, your girl can't hot girl summer anymore. She is chaos goblin fall only now. So sweaty. Coffee. That's making, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, with that, let's, um, let's do this. Let's get into it. I'm gonna start off with my most recent finished object and then share with you the other three and a half finished objects that I have. I guess the half is not finished, but that's a whole story. So first finished object that I have to share. The High Tide Shell by Lindsay Fowler of Larkspur Knits. Oh, here she is. 2022 is the year of the vest and you can't stop me. I have two more vests planned and I kind of want to cast them on tonight. I might do that. This is a vest that she designed using my hand dyed yarn on my Traveler's Worsted, which is a non-superwash Targi Worsted weight base and I love it. Apologies for my nails. Um, it sort of looks like they got gouged. I just did like a clear strengthening coat on them and then immediately had to change all the bedding in our upstairs because the cat peed on our bed. So that's my life. That's super fun. Elderly cats love it. Anyway, I knit mine. I did the test knit for her and I knit mine out of Nightmares Plus 10. This like grungy pink is previous yarn engagement and then this super deep burgundy is Yugen. And I love this so much. I did a pre-order on the website for kits using um, all the colors that we put together for uh, some tests. So this is the Duchess um, palette and I love it. It fits so good. I did mine a little bit more fitted. I have less positive ease than her pattern calls for and I didn't do the split hem. I just did a regular hem, but I really like wearing my vests um, more fitted and that's just that's just my style but sure directions are super easy to follow to do the split hem to do the regular hem whatever you want to do so this is it i believe i did a size four i'll put it up here again it goes down to children's sizes and then up to adult sizes so yeah i love it i love it so much this when i worked on it flew by i did basically this entire half the split after the armholes last weekend on the shop hop so it's very travel friendly i did the final cast off when i got home that sunday but i love this i love this so much and this will be coming out on august 26th when her book salt and timber is released and i'm so excited for you guys to see everything and Oh my god, I'm just, I'm so excited for this book. I have no more words. I've cried like 17 times in the past two weeks over this book. 
So yeah, this is finished object number one. And the other three-ish that I have to share with you are also test knits for Lindsay's book, Assault and Timber, which comes out on August 26th. I could not, it was all super secret knits. So last year when I kept saying I have things, but I can't show you those things, these were those things. Right. The first test knit that I finished was the Breathwater socks. These are a, it's a DK weight sock, which you get by holding two fingering weights double for a marled effect. And it's this fisherman rib with this adorable little detail. Oh my God, I love it. I knit these using my iron base, which is a BFL tweed in the colorways Monian Down and Warmed Caramel for just like this lightly variegated warm brown. Like it just looks like gingerbread. I love these. I love these. I haven't worn any of these things because they've just been hiding in a closet so I don't accidentally show you on a vlog or anything. So I can't wait to be able to wear these this year. I'm so excited for them. These were so fast too and she's got um, I think it was like a tubular cast on so you've got these super clean edges and I didn't do it correctly but if you weave in your ends properly you can like have it folded over and oh I just can't. I can't. I can't. I will be knitting Jake a pair of these because they go by so fast. And like this size, he can squeeze his feet into them. It's not the most comfortable thing. It's not how they're supposed to be worn. But he also has size 13 feet. I have size eight and a half women's. So we do have slightly different size feet. But I 100% like this might just be his new go to sock pattern. I know he loves a lace sock but I love a fast men's sock too. So this is test number one, and this was the Breathwater socks. The second test that I did was the Set Adrift shawl. And this is a knit on the bias triangle shawl. <sighs> like it's the little, it's the little details that just like make you want to eat the shawl. You know, you know that feeling where you just like, I want to, crush this with my hands. It's so adorable and I love it. That is that is these. So this is the set adrift. It is two skeins, two colors. I knit this on my Selkie base, which is my non-superwash merino and silk blend, and I did the colors Lady of Shalot and Ravishing. And honestly, this shawl would be the perfect those one skeins that you get at shows because you want a souvenir skein. Like this is the shawl for that. This is it. almost last test knit that I did. Don't give me that look, Audrey. You were the one who was borging. Is the Cape Lookout Shawl. And I can say that this is a very good travel knit. I knit the body of this while driving down to Florida to help my friend move. Last year? Last year? Last year? Yep. And then um, I knit the lace panel uh, on my flights home and then the ribbing when I got home. So this, oh God, I can't, this I knit out of Emerlite on my Selkie base and I believe Emerlite on my fig lace base. Uh, another good substitute would be Thunder Moon on my fig lace base, but I think this would also be a really good was it two skeins? I think this was two skeins of Emerlite. A really good, um, like you have that like special mohair skein or like a crazy mohair skein and then do like a solid base fingering weight underneath. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. And this one is also a triangle shape. Here we are, there she is. So I just, oh God, just the tones that she gives. I love this. I love her so much. I love a good lace triangle shawl. I can't, you guys, I cannot. I wish I could wear this, but I will boil to death. This is the second shawl I was a tester for, and oh, I love it. I like, again, this is not my green. I'm not a green person. I just, but I feel like I could walk out of my cottage in the spring in this, and that's what I want. That's all I want, just to be in a cottage in the forest in this shawl. I love it. I love it so much. 
the other thing that I did uh, test knit for her is still work in progress, and that is the Lighthouse Keeper pullover. I will be putting a photo um, of it here because Barnaby's in it, but I did run out of yarn. So I am using Jameson's of Shetland Soft Shetland Base, which is their Air and Weight yarn, not their DK Weight. I put a call out for their DK Weight because I didn't read the label, and then I read the label. It's the Air and Weight, so it's an Air and Weight Hell Double with a mohair. I am using um, Hearth as no, I lied. Did I? I don't know. I think I used Leatherbound. I used Leatherbound as my mohair. I promise. I know what I knit. I have some of their DK weight in the mail to try and hold double to finish this. It's a discontinued base, so it's been super hard to try and find any. I bought the yarn originally at the Yarn Barn in Woodbridge, Connecticut, and I did go back and I told them what I needed, and they did help me, but they just, they just did not have any more, which... It's a discontinued base. I don't know when they discontinued it. So it might have been a while ago and I just got some old stock. So we're gonna try holding the DK weight double. It's the same colorway, so I think we should be okay. And that's it. The end. She's she's still working. Barnaby's killing it with her right now, but that's yeah, that sweater. Just testing my patience. It's it's fine. <laughs> It was super easy to knit. It's really potato chippy with the texture stripes. I just was knitting it in a trying time for my knitting. <laughs> and those are all of my finished objects, sort of. Oh, I didn't, I have to show you these things. Okay, I have some more finished objects, but I already gifted them to the recipients. And this is all the baby knits that I have been sharing uh, with you over the past couple of months. So I'll be putting photos here. I knit the... Uh, flax light and a the playdate cardigan for my friend who already has a two-year-old and is expecting her second child next week at some point. I knit her and her husband matching hats. All this was out of Knit Picks Felici or Palette and I used the Pearl Soho um, ribbed brim folded brim hat. I will put a link down below for it. I think I was supposed to do that in a comment. I just blanked and that it was a week and a half later. And then I crocheted a log cabin a granny style blanket for the new baby. I didn't make one for her first son. So I just kind of, this way I'm not knitting the same thing for the same family. They have a little bit of uh, variety in their knitwear gifts oh. from me, especially being so close together in age. And yeah, that is, uh, those are all my finished objects. And that is a truck hitting a giant pothole. So let's get into whips and then talk about the I-91 Shop Hop. All right, whip number one is actually living in a new bag that I got on the Shop Hop. And this is Katie Did Bags in her witchy cat bag with the, I believe it's faux leather. It feels like faux leather uh, strap and bottom. It's a drawstring bag. I love it. And I am knitting Jake's High Tide Shell in this bag. So I am knitting the body of his, or not the body, the ribbing of his in Deny This. This is also on my Traveler Worsted Base, 100% non superwash Targi. And his contrast colors are Selkuth and Night's Migrations from the Fall Palette. And Deny This is from our Spring Palette. So this is his vest. This is the Fern Cliff palette and my goal is to get this done for him for India Untangled. He has been very dutifully wearing his Goat Herder Pullover by Ann Bud out of Brooklyn Tweed that I knit him while we were dating in 2017 I think. So it is time to knit him. It's not a sweater but at least I will have knit him a new vest. He does have the cardigan that I knit him for our engagement shoot but that is somehow heavier than the goat herder pullover. So yes, this will be his new Plies and Hellhounds uniform when he is my booth babe, which is pretty much every show now. I'm just about done with the ribbing. I have to measure it and then go find my needles and start the body. So this has kind of just been my TV knitting slash Sims knitting because it's 
now that I've done it once before, it's a little bit more mindless and I don't have to be paying attention to the pattern as much, at least until I get to like the shaping of the armholes and stuff. So that is whip number one. No, this one's buried. All right, whip number two is more gifts. We have our last baby shower of the year in September. So I have started on that. They are having a little girl and there she's doing like that terracotta pinks, oranges, yellows, like oatmeal color theme for the nursery. So I got those and I am doing a modern moss stitch crochet blanket. This is not as quick as the log cabin style cro granny square, but I feel like this style fits them more. And I'm using Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes. Um, I think I was supposed to order Swish. They're 100% Superwash Merino, and I just didn't, but it's not that scratchy. I'm gonna block it with a little bit of hair conditioner just to soften it up a little bit more, but I think they'll be fine. So I'm using Oyster Heather as the base, and then I will list the colors here because I put all the ball bands around, but uh, the plan is to repeat. Um, I started with the dark red, and then I'm gonna repeat from this gold to the green one more time and then do another red section for like 13 of these stripe sections and I think that should be a very decent size baby blanket. Uh, I'm using my baby blanket as the size guide. I did that with the log cabin style because uh, this is a really good size baby blanket. I think this is going to end up being a little bit wider but mine's, I don't know, maybe you just have a giant baby blanket. I don't know. I want it I want it to grow with them. That's the goal. I don't want this to be a blanket where when they're five, it's a handkerchief. I would like this to be, I mean, not to pressure their parents into keeping these forever, but if they wanted to keep them for as long as they possibly could. And yeah, this has been um, also Sims and computer and YouTube and just sitting and crocheting. My goal I should have plenty of time to finish this if I do one section a day. So I've been doing two sections every two days and then giving my wrists a break because crochet is uh, a different movement than what my wrists have been used to. So I don't wanna tire them out too quickly. And this I've just been carrying around in a basket all around my house. It just comes with me everywhere. So yeah, I did have to order more of the oyster yarn. I bought the yarn based off of what I used for the log cabin blanket, but because this is such a tighter weave, tighter gauge, tighter gauge of a yarn, um, it just it's just eating up more of the space, which is fine. It's Knit Picks. I ordered it. It should be here in a couple days, and I should still have plenty of time to finish this. I do have some knit plans for them as well, but I just haven't cast them on yet. I, that's kind of one of the things I want to do this weekend. I think I'm going to knit them uh, a ruffle dress and maybe a pullover. She's due in November, so I'm trying to do more layering pieces versus full on baby sweaters or anything because, and all that is going to be knit picks. And I think I'm going to use my red, white, and royal blue colors for like a nice neutral spring dress because it's got that like deserty tan and then like a light, almost this color green with some more speckles in it. So I think that'd be super cute too. Is that it? No, I have one more whip, one more whip. I cast on, I cast this on and I probably haven't worked on it since. The, where'd the book go? I brought it, did I not bring it over? All right, I lost it. I got the moon and turtle book last year at Rhinebeck by Kyomi and Sh Sashiko B. Bergen. Her Instagram is Sashiko B. Knits, so I always do that. I am knitting the Kinsen sweater, which is the striped sweater pattern. I will have a picture up here. And I also got this yarn at Rhinebeck last year, and I got some Stillwater Farms in the natural brown. I got some Sawkill Farm in this natural gray. And then I can't find the tag for this, but it's Coopworth in this burgundy and a cat hair. There it is. Um, it is a sport weight sweater. So these two are sport weight. This is a very light fingering. So I'm just gonna hold this double. And the plan is this be the main color. Um, I'm doing stripe pattern two. So then the stripe will go light gray, burgundy, light gray. 
for like the contrast color stripe. So those are my colors. I'm knitting the size two, which is a 38 inch bust. So I'm gonna have a good amount of positive ease, but I want this to be a relatively comfy sweater. I'm going to do the cropped version with the long sleeves, even though I push my sleeves up every time. And uh, this is as far as I've gotten. <laughs> this is it. I'm knitting this on my Knitter's Pride Mindful Needles with the swivel cables because I love them. And I'm maybe six rows away from joining in the round. I'm like two rows away from starting the stripes. It's not a lot. It's just a little mustache. Just a little baby. I cast this on Wednesday night, I think. So I have not gotten a lot done with it. I'm very excited for this. It might be one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. I might just have a vest Rhinebeck because who knows what the temperature is going to be. Oh, I also have my Vesper Teen sweater. I don't know. I haven't decided. I have big ideas, but just vibes. No concrete plans yet for Rhinebeck knitting and sweaters and stuff. I have to look at what I've knit. I've because a lot of it was secret knitting, I don't remember what I've done over the like the past year because I had to scroll it away so I didn't accidentally spoil anything. So those are all my works in progress. Yes, I have a lot of things I want to cast on and I really want to knit. I'm just having a difficult time making sure I'm prioritizing stuff that needs to get done versus things that I want but isn't also like it's not the right season for them situation. I don't know. I also think I just need something a little bit more intricate. I've been doing a lot of like stocking at bodies and stocking at sleeves and I don't want to pick them up I think because I'm bored while knitting them. So I think I need to get something that's going to be a little bit more like you have to pay attention potato shippy. I think that's what I need. All right. I've acquired a lot of things in the last couple of weeks. I showed you what I got at SSK. After SSK, I did show you the mirror that I got and I also bought myself, I don't know if I showed you this, but she's yarn. I should, I'm gonna put the name down here cause I can't, it's the, it's wool from the Manchego sheep family. I got three plates of it. I know the knot house is carrying this and I got this on Wooly Thistle because they had the darker gray, not the darker gray, what color is this? The darker brown that I was looking for. It smells so sheepy. It smells so sheepy. Uh, Sam of Samantha Gare Designs just released a shawl pattern or is going to release a shawl pattern. Knit a shawl, designed a shawl pattern in this yarn and it is delightful. I That is not the plan for this yarn. I do want to get yarn for that but this is going to be a fields of gold pullover by i think it's 100 acre wool i could i don't know like this is one of the things i really really want to cast on and i think that's going to be the intrigue that i need to keep me going through it so yeah my my plan was finish the blanket then i can cast this on because at least then i have a hunk a chunk of the baby knits done for it. This is just, I can't. It smells so good. I just want to knit it. It's, oh, I don't know nah, what to call it. It's not plied. It's on, it's like unspun. It's basically just like super thin roving. So you hold the double for, I have no idea. <laughs> No, I don't know. I just bought it. I love it. I love it so much. But uh, you hold the two strands double. You can't hold them single. You just sort of have to like unwind the whole thing. And they recommend holding it double with like a mohair or a silk or something just to give it that integrity and strength. It is very brittle on its own. But together, I think I will be okay. I just, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I've never knit a sweater out of yarn like this before and just, uh, I'm so excited. So this was my, you did it, you made it through SSK purchase. And then I went on a shop hop and I bought no yarn, but I think I bought the most stuff out of the three of us. I went with my mom and Adrian of the Barrows and Whites channel and I got things. I got a lot of things, but none of it was yarn or fiber. In no particular order, I, I got the bags and then I did get a bunch of, I, picked up um, some more swivel cables ah. from the Mindful collection. I got these at Margie's in Granby, Connecticut, and I got 
30, I think I got third 24 through 40. I just grabbed a couple of each because my cables are dying. I all almost all of my cables are from knitting needles that I bought in 2015, 2016. This sweater snapped three of them. They're just, it's time to replace them. So I picked these up. So as they break, I have cables to replace. I don't know what that was. I live on a dead end. There is no reason for that. Uncalled for. So I grabbed a bunch of these. And then in webs, I did pick up some 12 inch and 10 inch fixed circulars in the Mindful and Addy. Um, for sleeves. I'm not a 9 inch circular sock knitter girl, but I want to try a 10 or 12 inch circular for sleeve knitting because Magic Loop sleeve knitting is so finicky and I don't really like my DPN needles are very heavy for size like 5 through 8. So I picked up a 5, 6, and an 8 to try them out. These are like the most common sweater size needles that I use. I have a set in size 3 and I use them for one sweater and I enjoyed it but I would like to try them again and if it doesn't work they will be de-stashed or gifted or they will find new homes. I just wanted to give them a shot. So I picked these up at webs. I also got block and combs, but those are not very exciting to show you. We went to Knit New Haven, and this is usually where I end up buying yarn because I really like their selection, and they're, um, I consider them my local yarn store. We do have a yarn store much closer to us, but I haven't been to her since she moved, and I go to her mostly for needles. She has a um, New England spindle and yarn, New England spindle and fiber. Mary runs it. She's got a very good needle selection, but Knit New Haven, got embroidery stuff in. So I got this M Creative J. Yeah, M Creative J Monstera Leaf Embroidery Kit. This is the teal set, but I kind of want to see if I can um, keep the pattern around so I can do these two because I have a ton of embroidery floss from my cross-stitching embroidery days of 2019. Yeah, 2019. Ooh, I already opened it. It's been torn open, but I haven't started yet. I am hopeful that I can do um, eventually more of these and just have like a little rainbow of Monstera leaves. I love. the. They had a bunch of kits by this, by MJ Creative there, and I told myself I could not get two kits, but I could get a kit and just the stencils. So I got these little mushy mushroom stencils and this is on like a peel and stick uh, washable stabilizer so you can peel and stick it onto whatever you want embroider it and then when you wash it with like warm water it just dissolves this is what I used for so many years on embroidery things but also more recently uh, the base of the necklaces that I did for my bridesmaids in 2019 when I got married in 2020 pre, post, during, launching the pandemic. I don't know. So I got these guys. I don't know what I want to put them on yet. I kind of want to put them on like a pinafore, like make a square neckline, long skirt, like brown linen or like copper linen pinafore and put them on the front. I kind of want to put them on overalls. Um, I, this, yeah, I got these. I love them. They're so cute. So cute. Oh, God. So this was my Knit New Haven purchase. Again, not yarn. This thing that I got that I'm going to share with you, we did do some antiquing, but there's only so much I can show you. For, and most of it's on the walls now. So yeah, we did some antiquing. We also stopped in a new-ish quilt shop, new to me quilt shop. They're in a new location in New Hartford, Connecticut. It's called The Quilted You. Quilting is not in my blood. I've done one quilt. It was fine. It took me 15 years from start to finish of picking up the first fabric to finishing it. It's it's messy. It's not lined up in any way. There's like weird hole pockets because I didn't connect it all the way. It's not even, it's not my colors. I picked the fabric out when I was like nine. I think I actually quilted it in like 2014, 2015. Just quilting's not my thing. It's too precise. It, yeah, I just, it's not my thing. I've tried it multiple times. I've tried starting quilts multiple times. It just, I never really got the urge to do it. And then I went to this quilt shop and they were like, you know what? 
Say no more. Challenge accepted. The first thing I got was Moda Fabrics, <laughs> this charm pack, five inch squares of Through the Woods, and it's just got all these like gold, it's this Grello nat, uh, neutral deliciousness. I want to get some darker colors to go with this. I kind of, I don't know. I spent a lot of time on stashfabrics.com looking at their quilt patterns and trying to figure something out. I don't know. I, I like the idea of having handmade blankets around the house. Right now we just have a bunch of microfiber blankets from like college and my high school years. We like to update them. The dogs have mostly taken them over. So every time we use them, it does smell a little bit like dog food because they get snacks in it. Mm. Yeah, so I got this. And then I got this, which is really what's leading me into a rabbit hole. And this is by um, Northcott Fabrics. It came out in 2020 and it's a panel, a, a bee fabric panel. So what you can do with this is cut up all the photo, like cut out all the little panels and turn it into a quilt or uh, something or leave it whole and sew this into a quilt. I started looking at Northcott Fabrics and the designer who worked with them to make this fabric and they do have a couple quilt patterns to use this in specifically one of which is just making a quilt around the panel but I wanted to like cut this out and like I, I wanted something a little bit more than just sewing a couple bits of fabric around this and I found a couple that like the quilt was okay or it was mostly table runners and placemats and I'm not a table runner I'm not a placemat girl I want a big bee moody blanket so I will try and remember to put the photos up here. I'm torn between uh, this quilt that was designed using this panel, but it doesn't use all of the panel. And I don't know enough about quilting to just be like, I'll do what I want. There's, I love breaking the rules on things and not listening. And quilting's one of those things where I can't really break the rules. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I have this bee themed quilt that uses the panel. Maybe I'll just use up the extra two panels uh, in some way that I can. Or I found this sunflower quilt, uh, I think either on Pinterest or through the Quilted You or Stash Fabrics or Missouri Star Quilt Co. I think is the name of the website I was on looking for patterns. And it also uses panels, but just not that. There was another mode of fabric quilt but I it it took too much thought for me to try and figure out how I could use this panel so yeah I do have fabrics picked out to match this all of um this is like a whole line of like six fabrics by this designer only one of the fabrics is at the quilted you and I think I want to I want to go in and buy them in person and then like if I have any questions or if I need any help the everybody at the store can help me and they're right there but I want to go back and get that and then there was some fabric there that I want to get for curtains for my office that were just vibes so yeah I don't know <laughs> this might be like a winter craft thing like post Rhinebeck I need to chill on the spending for a minute <sighs> but I also don't want to go back and them not have the fabric so I might in a couple weeks go back and pick up all the fabric and stuff and just not get like the backing fabric or anything. I think I'm just going to do like a plain black for the backing and just keep it easy. So that's what I got. I don't expect quilting to be a thing that I do now. This might just get it out of my system. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not committing to anything because if I say I'm not a quilter, then you're going to turn around and be like, well, I've quit yarn. I design quilts now. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought I threw this on myself. That was the I-91 Chop Hop. The rest of this is just going to be what we've been up to and what I have been reading because I have not updated you on that since pre-SSK. And to be a giant letdown, I haven't been reading that much since SSK. I I think it's because I'm stuck on the last guild book which I believe is glow I want to say I'm about halfway done I just there's just something about it that I just can't get into it so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna open the kindle I haven't touched the kindle in oh like a month now 
um, see where I'm at. If I'm pre 50%, I'm going to DNF it. Maybe I'll try again when the last book comes out. If I'm post 50%, I'm, I'm going to give myself a couple days to try and finish it. But I might DNF it. I just can't get through it. I just don't know what it is. I don't, it's, it's the 24 ribbons. It's, I don't know, just something. I really want to like it. I love the retelling. I love the broody, misunderstood. I'm not who I say I am, but I'm doing this to protect my people. Moody boy with too many names. And then like we're now in the she's become like becoming her own person and building her strength up and like I'm doing this for me and I don't want to be taken advantage of anymore. It makes me a little sad that it's like the fourth book that she's doing this. But like Midas was such a good bad guy. I understand why it took so long. But that's my um, formal review. It's just like <sighs> last I t spoke to you, I finished The Perfect Crimes of Marion Hayes by Kat Sebastian. Delightful. Read it. Do it. So cute. Hot dummies. Not a brain cell between any of these characters. 10 out of 10. Must protect. On the drive down to SSK, I read The Companion by E.E. E. Ottoman. It is not a murder mystery. One of the characters is a murder mystery author. The things that you learn when you actually read the back of a book. Uh, the Companion is a trans romance of, uh, what's her name? Oh no! Two trans women and a trans man in the countryside. I think it's in like the Hudson Valley. And she goes to become a companion to work on her writing because she was living in Brooklyn, but she had to, she had to work outside of writing to support herself because it's Brooklyn. It was in the night. It had to be like the late 1940s. I think it was po it was post World War II, but not quite like the 50s era yet. So she gets invited to come stay at this house of an author who just needs a companion, and it's just kind of like discovering her love for these two people. One of which is just like peak cottagecore farmer, like rain boots and flowy flower dresses, and then just like grumpy. <laughs> I love it so much. Grumpy Moody. I'm an artiste author, but like, I will leave you breakfast every morning because I get up earlier than you. And uh, it was just delightful. It was absolutely delightful. It was super cute. I listened to it straight through on the drive. I think we finished it before we even got to Tennessee. 10 out of 10. Again, not a murder mystery, but the author is a murder mystery author. Delightful. Polyamorous romance, a thousand out of ten. Please read. The cover, also beautiful. I literally picked it based on the cover. I love judging books by their covers. The second thing that we, oh, I listened to that on Scribed, which is now my audiobook place because I love it. Oh, I listen to other things. Did I tell you about the Witches of New Orleans? I listened to that. I don't know who it's by. I will put it down though. It's four separate romances about four witches who are in the same coven in New Orleans and they're all ranging from like early 20s to like mid 30s and it's just pure romance chaos. Like, oh my god, the like the fancy social media which needs help and then like they're they fall in love it's just so cute it's a little it's like four short stories 10 out of 10 and they're all interconnected in some way so like you can get a little glimpse of like their relationships as they grow very cute listen to that in one day the next thing I listened to was the hex x which was a book of the month book but I listened to that one also unscribed all these I listened to unscribed 10 out of 10 it's like $12 a month and there's so many things on that platform website I don't know uh I don't remember who that's by a Georgia witch who they like met in college had a summer fling and then like as a joke she cursed him while drunk and then it turned out to be a very real curse so when he came back to charge the ley lines in the town that his family founded, it was a total disaster. And it was delightful and super cute and another must protect at all costs, 10 out of 10. And he's Welsh. So like a thousand out of 10 Welsh witches. Beautiful. I think he's Welsh. I'm pretty sure he's Welsh. I think he's Welsh. The <laughs> chaos books. The next thing that Jake and I listened to on the drive home from SSK was Spoiler Alert by Olivia Something. 
I think Olivia something. I, again, I'll put the name down here. It is a contemporary romance of a woman who writes fan fiction based on this very Game of Thronesy style series of books that got turned into a TV show and she befriends another fanfic author who turns out to be the main character in the show and he writes fanfiction about his own show and it's delightful and it's very much like uh what's not fake dating it's kind of fake dating like she finally posts a cosplay of herself but because she is a plus size woman she gets hate on twitter because twitter is a dumpster fire of garbage pots and he stands up for her and then they end up going on a date and then they it was just all of the super cute things jake sorry i ugh, keep wanting to rub my eyes but i let her on jake also loved it he thought it was hilarious the best friend 10 out of 10 like ugh, so good so good um yeah like the best friend everyone gets into writing fan fiction it's just oh it was delightful it was amazing let me get my birth journal so i can double check to make sure i'm not missing anything else i don't think i am I have not updated this since May. I am keeping track of all of the books I'm reading. You can't see, but I'm just writing in pencil the pages that will be that page. I just need to sit down and do it. Uh, the Companion. Spoiler alert. All right, that's it. Uh, we're caught up. I am listening to the queer policies of Kit Webb. The queer particulars of Kit Webb. It's Cat Sebastian. It takes place before The Perfect Crimes of Marion Hayes, but it's with Percy and Kit, two characters in the book. Percy wants to hire Kit to rob his father because his father sucks, and they found out that, like, his dad married somebody before he married Marion, but, like, never divorced her, and she was still alive, so therefore, like, Marion's marriage is false, and her daughter technically is, like, not actual, like, not in the eyes of the law real and Percy's not really the heir because they might have had a son together so they are trying to figure out a way to like basically blackmail his father into giving them money and then dropping off the face of the earth and ruining him because he's a garbage person who sucks but uh Percy is was raised a gentleman in the 50, 1750s and Kit was a is a retired highwayman who runs a coffee shop in London. Ugh, again, hot dummies. Not a thought behind those eyes. I love them so much. I just want to crush their little heads. They're so cute. It's like your stare it's so like it's all the best tropes of like oh i'm looking to hire you but i spend every single day in your coffee shop for hours but i'm literally just here to learn how to rob people and they're like oh yeah oh, of course and like their best friend betty who um offense is that what she she takes the stolen goods that people bring her sells them so they're not traceable so she's just like uh like London girl who like grew up on the streets who can take care of herself and is just like very blunt about it and just like hey stop staring at each other's eyes we got things to do <laughs> oh my god it's so good it's so cute I am again listening to that on scribed and uh 10 out of 10 oh my god I just want to crush their giant heads together they're so stinking cute just chef's kiss there was a classic, like, I got drunk and I couldn't think of anywhere to go, so I went to you situation. Ugh. Ugh. So good. I'm probably, like, halfway done with that book. It, they're very quick listen to. It usually takes me one or two days to listen to, but I listen to them for, like, six hours at a time while I'm working. So, yeah, that is what I am reading. I have a couple books lined up for after that, but I am waiting on a couple to decide what I'm going to read next kind of thing just yeah I just I don't know reading hasn't been uh a lot I think I think glow is to blame for that so again I might DNF her we'll see we'll see I don't know I have been playing a lot of Witchwood I actually finished that game and that is a cozy game on the switch where you are a witch with a little cauldron head who runs around collecting souls of like villain creatures in uh this little forest village for a goat so I just finished that. It was delightful. I'm very sad that it's over, but it was a ton of fun to play. 
I haven't really been playing Animal Crossing that much because I did a giant search for Eunice the sheep and that took me five days to do so then I got a little burnt out on Animal Crossing. There we go. I still haven't worked on any of the frames or the mirror. I It's just been um, super crazy getting back into the swing of things after SSK. I'm dying up all the Traveler's pre-orders. As you can see back here, I have the mini skeins in for the advent calendars. I'm waiting for the full skeins to come in. I have a pre-order with India Untangled for the Where We Knit Club currently up on their website, so I will be dying that. I have to dye the Wicked Seeds Club uh next week as well so because i was waiting for that yarn to come in it's just it's been it's gonna be a busy month i'm super excited to start on the advents i'm super excited to get all the travelers out for everybody's high tide vests and other sweaters that you're doing and i'm very excited to start planning for indian tangled for rhinebeck weekend i cannot wait i have ideas i have so many ideas i just need to make sure i give myself the time to actually do them so with that, I'm going to go work on some vests and edit this video and do more work because I've been avoiding computer work for like two weeks because I didn't want to do it. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I put out videos almost every Saturday and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.